Hello and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. I'm really enjoying this game. I mean, um, there's like very light strategy elements, but it's mostly like how you uh, decide to progress the story, which is, it's it's very compelling for me. Um, I hope it is for you as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and sleep because I left that in the last episode. We are still being hunted. Hopefully we can deal with our tracker before um, that becomes a problem. We still have um, five dice. I don't know if I necessarily want to take more stabilizer um, like as quickly as possible. I think I'd be comfortable dropping down to three dice before I take stabilizer. I'm sure there's a mathematical way to, to figure out the ideal time to take stabilizer. Maybe it's like just as you're about to drop to two, it might be a good time to take stabilizer. Um, but we have some, we have a couple of ones and ones are good for collecting data. So let's go check out this. Uh, well, that's a node. We want to check out the, uh, no, that's yet again, agent. The Helicon was Havenage agent. Uh, there are two and a three, unfortunately. So we'll have to spend the three to do this. And I will do that because I really want to make progress on Feng's quest. Have an edge data. Um, and we also wouldn't. Oh, that's our ripper worm. Have an edge data. Have an edge cipher. We've got some interesting things. Um, uh, not sure where I'm supposed to send those. Have an edge gate. Maybe I'm supposed to send this. Spend this here. Slot. Have an edge cipher. The gate flips. You are in. Uh, okay, so there's things to collect here um, That's where we put our ripper worm, I guess it looks to be a double dot. I'm not sure what that means But either way, let's go ahead and do that uh, And now there's a we can actually access it. Oh, we have to put another ripper worm in there. Maybe um, maybe Feng will supply us with a new one, but I think we can talk to Feng now. Where is Feng? Feng's Ripper Worm is installed, but it'll take a few cycles to run through the closed network. Okay, well that's kind of unfortunate. Where are we with being hunted? Ooh, we're very close to being hunted. Um, I pro probably should have gotten that started as soon as possible. I think I, I mean, I got it started pretty quickly, but, uh, well, okay. So this, uh, this is our access to the Oort, um, fabricator, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it looks to be. Uh, this is the dock for salvaging data and scrap. Construction yard. We could make some progress here. Ex assist the ship builder. Why don't we do that? We'll spend um, our extra points here. We may as well progress something. I think it's better to complete something than to, you know, uh, spread yourself out too thin. Got some cryo, got some yard hand. Um, so, and then we'll spend the rest of our dots, our pips on... Uh, collecting some data we'll see what this leads to plus one encrypted key we've got a lot of encrypted keys hopefully they will come in uh, handy there's the hunter again a glimmer in the dark catches your eye as the orb of hunter's head appears in the distance it is looking for you hide you slip down into the ghostly structures of the eye, a feeling like uh, passing through a cloud as their data structures deform and reform around you. Another glimmer catches your eye, closer now. That roving orb, wreathed in tentacles. It flickers, jumps once, twice, and then it is here. Hunter is here. Entity, submit to inquiry. Hunter reaches for you in that unpleasantly familiar way. It's waving threads creating a cage struggle 
You push against the threads as they close in, becoming frenzied as you push them aside. You're caught by whipping tendrils and feel them pulling you away from the anchor of your body. You push through, clearing the threads. Entity, hold for processing, comes the scream from behind. But you are already gliding away, back to your anchor, your body. You awake, dizzy, distorted, but safe. We have one more one pip, and there's another Havenage agent, so we go ahead and throw it on that. Oh, that, that needs a two or a three. I just went ahead and assumed that we could take it. What do we have here? This is another node. We'll, we'll go ahead and grab something from it. You know, as long as we have, like, we have really good interface, we may as well use it. And it's a good way of spending our one pips, because I really don't want to spend them um oh i see this is our this is our dots on hunter so i guess the more interfacing we do the more in encounters we have with hunter interesting so that's actually all of our dice spent already i spent them pretty quickly um noodle factory and delivery what is this noodle manufacture endure or engage delivery de delivering noodles to the nameless and units of the low end makes takes guts and a certain fearlessness when it comes to asking for tips interesting okay well um we don't have much to do right now so let's go ahead and go home We'll need to grab some food. We are now at two, two actions. So I think, uh, I mean, I think we'll buy, get some stabilizer maybe on the next uh, cycle. We're still being hunted. We have a merchant freighter. Haggle over prices. You and the merchant know these fragments are overpriced, but are they willing to admit it? You'll get one chance to see. Skill upgrade required. Okay. Buy shipment fragment. Limited supply. Um, this will put me in the in the red in terms of being able to buy more stabilizer. But I may be able to leverage those goods and get some more money. <clears throat> How do I uh, gain access to this ort fabricator? You heard talk of a fabricator owned by the Ort Exchange. With that and a few fragments, you could build a ship mine core. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just meant to do these. So let's go ahead and do these. Limited supply. Ship mine fragment. Um, it's amazing. I haven't uh, leveled up yet or in a while. I'm probably I'm gonna be hunted by the same time that Fang can help me with the tracker, which kind of sucks. What is here? This is just another. Takes several cycles to reach the Star Ward belt and return. Oh yeah, this is just for buying more scrap. I don't have enough to buy more ship mine parts. Can we go to the Ort Exchange? I can't. I don't think I can buy anything here. So why don't we go ahead and play the exchange? Cause that way I can make make a bit more money. Positive outcome, plus 19 cryo, trusted trader. We could do that again for a bit more money. And I don't think I want to buy more um, ship mined parts until I know I have enough to afford another stabilizer dose. But let's go ahead and get some food. Oh, what is this? Uh, Girol fr uh, Fricassee. Emphis wants to make this old recipe. He'll need three handfuls of Girola, Girola caps, fresh and firm. Plus on fungus fan, but fungus fan is done, right? There is no fungus fan. 
So uh, interesting that it says tells you plus on fungus fan when you can't actually increase on fungus fan. Maybe if I do noodle factory delivery, I can learn about these mushrooms. Uh, endure or engage express delivery. Let's do express delivery, maybe. Plus nine cryo. I don't think that led to anything. Doesn't pay much, but he'll feed anyone who does a shift. Um, and then there's the free spoke. This is another thing that we can work on. Blistered with precarious elevators and stairways, the spoke can be navigated from the outside, but the climb requires bravery. And wasn't I helping someone in the shipyard? I was making progress on this. Um, this would be risky. I could potentially lose uh, some condition on this, but I'm going to do it. I don't have much I can spend my three on. Neutral outcome. Yard hand. Random scrap piece. That's actually great. We can take that and we're going to sell that at the um, Ort Exchange. And that'll get a, give us some progress on Trusted Trader. We might even see the end of this. There we go. 12 cryo and plus on Trusted Trader. We might get a new NPC as well. Ort Fabricator. There we go. Ship mines cannot be built from scratch, but if you have enough, salvaged fragments can be assembled with a fabricator. There we go. Heck yeah. We have a ship mined. The core of a ship, AI, amputated and in hibernation. Not sure what we're going to do with that, but hey, we did it, and we got an upgrade point for doing so. Mindcraft. I just got an achievement. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a point into being an efficient extractor. I think that's something I I seem to be doing that. So um, I'm going to do that. Use scrap components at home to repair a condition. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, cool. Agent nodes give you give double data rewards. I might uh, end up buying this two points to do that. Okay. It does see it feel like the flavor is distinctly this um, character. So I do wonder um, if like future playthroughs wouldn't be worth doing because then we'll get like kind of a very different flavor of, of experience. Um, but hey, we've already gone through another day. So let's go ahead and rest. So we have four actions still. We're still, um, yeah, I mean, like, we're, we're keeping things going. We should be able to pay for our next dose when we when we really need it, when we get kind of desperate. Um, we're still being hunted, and Fang is still working on whatever, so that's unfortunate, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. So why don't we, instead of getting food from uh, our, our from Emphis, why don't we do some work for Minji Express? Minji or Mingi. Um, and then hopefully they can help us figure out this, uh, this mushroom situation. We have a negative one, so this is our riskiest stat. He doesn't pay much, but he'll feed anyone who does a shift. I get the impression that this isn't uh, is not going to pay out. But we'll find out. Yeah. It doesn't seem to progress any kind of story element. Maybe we can make friends instead. Uh, friends might be a better way of doing this. And we can spend our 3 to be to make it a 4 and uh <clears throat> that that, uh, since we have our plus one on engineer. Ugh. That was the only way that could have gone badly. But that's fine. I'm gonna spend the rest of our points on this. To try and make uh, some friends. 
and we got plus energy and plus on low ender yeah let's go ahead and spend this last point on this nice and we got we have full energy so that's nice new drive discovered what extract the past build a home there's a derelict unit in the low end that remains unclaimed with a lots of scrap and a little work it could be yours oh we have new locations as well Tambor house Tav Tavla room so that's if we want to play Tavla some of the best players in the low end this is serious high stakes only play tracking Havenage we could spend Havenage data here You've heard that the Yadagan Enforcer base here it has been play paying low-end residents for information on Avenage movements. I don't know if I shouldn't keep this for uh, Feng when he's done, but I have a funny feeling that this will not affect that. Plus 10 cryo. Well, that's not as much as I was hoping for. That's fine. So we should be saving our scrap now um because i'd like to i'd like to buy a ship since we bought like we went ahead and got a ship mine core gather materials this half-built unit looks like it looks long forgotten a project that never made it with enough scrap you might be able to seal it up all right let's spend a scrap to start this nice Good enough. And we have spent our dice. We are um, on our uh, climax here of being hunted. Just give me one moment here. All right. So let's, let's see what happens here. I'm a little bit concerned, but who knows? Maybe, maybe both things will kind of clash against each other. Oh, we only have three uh, three actions now so i'm gonna wait until i'm about um we're, we're almost at two dice and then i'll buy another dose hold it there sleeper comes a voice from behind you don't you run stay still good good a hand pats your coat down you know your master's voice ethan spins you around he is wearing a wide smirk and a th slick jacket and you immediately know he is terrible news you got all the way out here and then stayed to put he laughs a cruel laugh that a sleeper thing you're my first you barely hear him you've noticed the handgun he has leveled at your chest and it's hard to take your eyes off it he reaches down with his other hand and slips some kind of ring out from a belt loop without taking his eyes off you making it to the eye though that's pretty good this place isn't so bad bars market people I pull most of my contracts out of asteroid caves or off of godforsaken moons. He spits into the ring. He's sorry, he spits into the ring. Oh my god. He splits the ring into two perfect circles. It's hard to hit civilization when there's so much space to pass through. Who are you? Uh, stay silent. He reaches over to slide the rings around your wrists. Go easy. Make a break for it. You see a chance the moment his eyes leave you to watch the rings you spin knocking him away and sprinting down the corridor then the shots ring the shot rings out echoing off the metal so loud it hurts your ears a bullet hole smokes in the wall beside your head you freeze and ethan closes the gap why would you freeze just keep running this is a very boring routine trust me i've seen it all before he slips the ring over your trembling wrists ethan nudges you to start walking to the ship and home he whistles going easy you stumble down the corridor your hands behind you your mind racing we can work this out can we i don't see much in the way of assets in your possession ethan yawns and continues to nudge you down the corridor shame to come all the way out here just to head back to east and arp uh s and arp right away that tracker of yours makes this too quick was hoping you'd put up a bit more of a chase you know a running battle through the bright market maybe or a holdout in the low end there's a few establishments i would have en enjoyed checking out while i asked around you walk on in silence for a little longer desperately trying to think of a way to escape that s and arp tracker will be the death of you hey i have an idea ethan interrupts your thoughts 
How about on the way back to the ship we stop for a drink? I'm buying. He laughs at his own joke. I have a better idea. This better not be one of those where... Those where you do a dramatic pause and then try to jump me. Because I'm pretty tired of that. Although, muses Ethan. I've got myself thinking, what's the rush here? Here we are in one of those... One of the most lawless joints in the surrogate systems, and we are heading for the exit. He pauses, and you trudge on in silence. Okay, here's the deal, starts Ethan. You and me, we make a little agreement. Here are the terms. He turns to uh, turns you to face him. You run or leave or try to abandon the eye, I shoot you. You plot, a, plot or scheme, you try to kill me, I shoot you. But, he smiles... You come meet me at an establishment of my choice every few cycles, and you pay me tab. You pay my tab, I don't shoot you. He pauses. You don't pay my tab, he rattles his handgun. You get the idea. I get it. Okay, then. That sounds to me like a deal. He stretches. You know, I really thought I was going to have to kill you, but this is so much better. He clicks something at his belt, and the rings release from your wrists. I'm going to see if I can find my old stool at the compressor club. Come see me there. He aims the handgun at you, squinting down the sight. Let me just remind you, that body of yours is one big tracker, so don't even think about leaving the eye. I'll know it. Ethan turns and strides out, off down the corridor, slipping his handgun away. The mix of relief and terror you feel is overwhelming. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to get rid of that tracker right now, actually. Hopefully. As you arrive, Feng comes striding towards you, taking you by surprise. Let's go, sleeper. He puts a hand on your shoulder and turns you back the way you came. Go where? To see Harden Hurst. He gives you a sideways glance. Isn't that what you are here for? Honestly, Feng, I wish you'd remove the tracker as quickly as possible. I'm pretty sure since Harden Hurst has apparently been alive for thousands of cycles, that, uh, you know, the pressing matter is actually my own life, and this guy will be here when we come back from, you know, you removing my tracker. That would, that to me seems like, like, not even selfish thinking, that seems like just practical. Like, if you need my help, then help me help myself, you know? Uh, he steps into the passage, guiding you down ring towards the shipyard. Sorry for the hurry, but we have something of an opportunity. That data you ripped, well done by the way, he grins, tells me Harden is making a rare inspection of the side reel, uh, side reel horizon this cycle. It's the perfect chance to confront him outside of that compound he hides in. Feng takes a sharp turn into a dimly lit side passage. Side reel horizon? Still catching up? That's the massive colony ship being built out in the shipyard. Biggest commission Havenage has ever had. Feng slows and slips into a dark service tunnel where, somewhere in the back, in the black, a water pipe drips. It's him, sleeper, the same hardened Hurst. Our worm ripped out decades of records that mention him by name, an entire trail of documentation from the first days of the Solheim collapse until now. He rode, he rode out the whole thing. He slipped into Havenage when it first broke off from the Union. He paces in the tunnel, a hand rubbing at the back of his head. I need you to understand something about Solheim, sleeper. I don't know what you know about the collapse, but it wasn't as instant as it sounds. It wasn't like Solheim was here running the station one day and the next Erland's union took power. Back then, Solheim knew this place was slipping away from them. As the Palladium market collapsed, they tried to keep the contractors here working. The pay got smaller, the costs higher. People like my parents were forced to work nonstop just to keep a berth on the station and water in their tanks. Solheim squeezed every last worker until the mistakes, the accidents, were coming in nonstop. And as new waves of contractors came in, desperate to work, Solheim welcomes them, taking bribes instead of checking pilot licenses. The whole time Solheim was folded up, sorry, folding up, dragged into court cases in the central systems while the severed sim of a, of a station still desperately tried to take out, take all it could. The riots came after the collision at Dock 2, a young pilot, his MEV overloaded with palladium, miscalculated his trajectory and took out a section of the ring. Hundreds died, thousands panicked. My parents told me people were terrified, and the blame fell squarely on Solheim. People like to tell stories about Erlen about how he brought the factions together, spoke to the crowds, turfed out Solheim. Maybe that's true, but my mother, 
pregnant with me, locked herself in their MEV and welded it to the dock while my father joined the improvised crews, trying to seal up the ragged edges of the gap. He never came back. Fang pauses in the dark. They sealed it up, though, and by the time they did, Solheim was gone, abandoning every one of us to the black. Apart, Fang finally turns back to you now, his eyes burning. From shits like Harden, shits who held their place, rode it out, and slipped into the new structure like nothing had changed, standing shoulder to shoulder with those that they had exploited every step. Fang starts walking again. That's why I can't just let him strut about the shipyard. This time, his past catches up with him. How is he still alive? Clearly you don't know much about executives. That kind of power comes with certain benefits. Fang rejoins the main passageway, which is now wide and glass-roofed. Through the ceiling you can see ships in mid-construction, their flanks lit by the flashes of plasma. Torches. The entrance to the shipyard is ahead. Let's go. Fang grins. Let's go show the shithead come so, uh, some consequences. He strides to the shipyard entrance and pushes through the doors. A web of corridors led through the complex, snatches of the construction bays always appearing through windows. Ships are suspended like whale corpses, skeletal imposing. Feng seems to know exactly where he is going. <clears throat> and before long, you uh, cross into a huge dry dock locked to one side of the side reel horizon. A network of platforms and scaffolding cling to the ship's hull, filled with workers and equipment. The sound is stretched out by the vast space so that the welding, cutting, and sealing seems to come from everywhere at once. Both you and Feng spot them at the same time, a group walking slowly across a gantry, and at the front, two men, one gesturing towards the ship and the other stick thin, cleanly dressed with a shock of gray hair. Harden. You and Feng say his name in unison, and Feng sets up, uh, set, sets off up the staircase to the gantry, and with you following behind. As you come to the same level, the group is passing closer. The foreman gesturing to the work behind, uh, being done throughout the dock, and Harden nodding along. Harden Hurst. This seems like a bad idea, to be honest. Feng shouts across the noise, taking you by surprise. His voice bounces and comes back in a rippling echo. The figures turn. Yes? Harden asks quizzically, raising an eyebrow. He glances between you and Feng, and you see his gaze linger on your body, unsure of why a sleeper might be in his place, in this place. There he is. You're a traitor, Harden. A Solheim executive who tried to hide here among its victims. Feng's voice is steady, strong. You stand for everything the eye was rebuilt in the shadow of, against everything Erlen stood for, everything Havenage stands for. You have no place on this station. For a moment, stillness descends on the group, as if everyone was held in place by the rattle of construction. Harden laughs. Well, good to meet you too. He glances around at those around him. Some are smiling, the others nervous. You're from the system branch, are you not? Asks Harden, inspecting Feng's clothes. Feng turns to the foreman. You need to call your security. This man is a corporate agent. The foreman glances between Feng and Harden, his hands drumming at his sides. Harden leans towards him and says something inaudible. The foreman nods. It's true. As he begins speaking, Harden turns his attention to you. And what would a sleeper know about that? You accuse me of being a corporate agent. What are you, if not exactly that? He looks around at the group, who are already eyeing you with suspicion. You are a, pro a product of S and ARP. You have no place in a Havenage shipyard. Who knows what signals you are sending back to your makers? A murmur of approval turn, uh, runs through the group. Feng holds up a stick of memory. You guessed right. I am Systems, and I have records that link you directly to Solheim right here. He turns to the foreman again. So once again, I am asking you to take this man into the custody of the shipyard. The foreman remains still. Harden's voice is calm, measured. If you have such data, why hasn't it been submitted at a, at a member's meeting for proper review? He shakes his head. I have nothing to hide, unlike a man who does not announce his name. 
who enters my shipyard with corporate property in tow and tries to turn my own men against me. You hear it now, the echoing sound of boots on the walkways, coming from all angles at once, and then settling behind you. Please, says Harden, submit the data through the correct channels, then we can talk. For now, however, you must leave. He gestures behind you to the security detail, their hands on boxy black sidearms at, uh, at their sides. Feng spits. Harden, you shithead, you can't wiggle out of this one. A security officer draws their weapon and levels it. Feng turns and stares him down. Calm, Feng. You look at Feng. He shakes his head and puts a hand on your shoulder. Let's go, says Feng. And he pushes through security, heading back down the, the walkway. Once security has walked you out of the shipyard and nudged you back into the corridor, Feng picks up pace. You try to keep up as he slips into the shadows of an entrance. Feng is grimacing ear to ear. Sorry, grinning ear to ear. You know, sleeper, sometimes people are exactly how you expect them to be. Something pings in his pocket and he takes it out. On the slate, of, uh, a web of connection starts drawing itself out, stretching to a set of points around the ring. Got him, mutters Feng. What is that? That, sleeper, is something your worm added to Harden's personal slate. We are tracking his outgoing messages. Feng's grin looks ghostly in the uplit, uh, uplight of his screen. The old ways are best. Spook them good enough, and they'll give the game away. He jabs at the slate, and you see the web is being drawn over a map of the ring, lines bouncing from point to point. All these dots, these are Harden's buddies, the ones he is messaging right now, and we are going to find them all. That was on purpose? Of course, Harden isn't working alone. We need the full set of, uh, we need the full set or nothing. Feng glances around and slips the slate back into his pocket. We better split for now, sleeper, but this is exactly what we need. Good hunting. With a pat on your shoulder, Feng drifts away, back into the flow of people around you, uh, around the shipyard entrance. You watch him go, unsure whether to be angry or impressed. Wow. And we got an upgrade point. I think I'm going to save them. I think I'd rather, um, well, I guess I'm going to be spending sh scrap on that ship. So I don't know if I want to do self-repair just yet. And I have the money to keep up on uh, my stabilizer demand. So maybe I'll look at Icebreaker since we are the inter interface character. It seems that uh, doing that would be a good idea. We do have uh, one point, so we could do some data gathering. Uh, what do we got over here? Personal terminal is empty apart from a single high-level encryption locked behind access protocols. Sure, why not? We got an encrypted key. What can I do with these? Able to unlock the station's aging mag locks. Can I spend these on something like this? I have so many of these now. No? Okay. Okay, let's work on making a friend. Um, we're almost done on this one. Block maintenance. Let's spend the six, because I really don't want to fail on a five. Actually, since it's uh, engineer, it should become a six, right? Yeah. There we go. I didn't seem to get anything for that. Oh, here, here, here we go. Caster, curious data fence. You cross between two walls of units, one of the ca cavernous streets at the center of the low end. The pressurized bridge is full of the clack of tr uh, tabla, the shouts of children, the whir of air filters. Oh, caster. Sleeper, you turn to see a man sitting at a tavla table that's not tavla that's backgammon i died can i know what backgammon looks like nah it's fine it's tavla in this universe it's tavla you turn to see uh, a man sitting at a tavla table alone somehow untouched by the hustle and bustle of the people around 
He gestures to the stool on the opposite side of the table. Sit. Sit. You sit at the metal stool and he starts setting out the board with counters, or at least the filter caps low enders typically use in their place. Caster, he says, by the way. Uh, by way of introduction. Looking over his glasses. Night or day, he asks, gesturing at the caps, crudely sp sprayed white or black. Day. He rotates the board so the white caps are in front of you. Let's begin. You take a plastic die, each padded and worn, and roll to determine who starts. Caster rolls a six. You a four. I lead, he smiles, and begins to move his first cap precisely along the board. Play passes back and forth between you, the dice changing hands as the caps spread along the board. As it does, Caster speaks, eyes not leaving the caps. It is unusual to see a sleeper on the eye. That's why I wanted to play you. You take your turn, rolling a five and a six. Play carefully. After all, a sleeper's mind must be somehow different to a human one. Being emulated, I mean. As Caster talks, you build up a wall of caps, stacking them safely across the board. Progress is slow, but you remain unexposed. I don't mean to offend you. Caster meets your eye. I merely see that you are, by definition, different. What has been subtracted in the emulation? What has been added? He slides a single cap onto an open point. A risk and an opportunity. He hands you the dice. Do you ever think about the sleeper? About what you were before and what you are now? Never. You roll a double six and slide your caps out of danger. Caster sucks his teeth. The running game, I understand. Why look back when you can look forward? He rolls the dice and strikes your ex exposed cap, sending it back to the beginning. But there are limits, sleeper. We all come from somewhere. You more than any of us. The past you is not just an idea, a concept for you. It is a living, breathing person. He looks up over his glasses, his eyes bright and wide. You split from them like a shadow splitting from its caster. They may be sleeping now, yes, but one day they will awake and carry on with their lives unaware of your fate, no matter what it may be. He hands you the dice, smiling. You are a branch severed from the main trunk, an offshoot who refuses to die, so to speak. You roll again, under pressure now, trying to slip your caps out from under casters before he solidifies control of the game. So, what I am curious about is how you see yourself in all of this, Caster asks. What does this tangle of truths make you? Driven. Caster laughs. That much is obvious, sleeper. I see it in your eyes. You are eager to make all this count for something. Caster looks away through the glass to the crowded units on all sides. But driven towards what? He starts removing caps, his home board now full. Is there an end here or just an endurance? You try a few more rolls, attempting to get back in the game, but Caster clears his home board with a sense of the inevitable. He has known he was winning for a while. I feel I may have pushed too far. He slides another cap from the board. I apologize. My curiosity has a habit of getting the better of me. You roll to return a cap to the board, but all the spaces are blocked. Caster clasps his hands apologetically. You play well, really. Your weakness is not your game. He smiles warmly. We have much to learn from each other. He slides his glasses back up his nose and sits back. I feel we could share knowledge, ideas, perhaps even data. His eyes glint with that last word. To our mutual benefit. He slides his final cap from the board. It is over. He has won. I'll see. Please, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. He's hol he holds up his palms. My intention is only to help you endure here, and if I am able, feed my curiosities. The game over, you notice the bustle of the walkway once more, the call of the children, the deliveries, the arguments and reconcilia uh, reconciliations. They wash over you as you stand and leave, Caster nodding goodbye as you do. Crossing the walkway, you replay, you replay the moves of the game in your mind, looking for an opening you are sure was there. So what can we do here? Ah, if we have yet again business. But we need five. Input five. Or if we have uh, Havenage protocols, we can put five of those in there. So I should have saved that. I had a funny feeling I was making a mistake by doing that. Um... 
We can't do anything on the derelict timber tea, uh, tea house. That's where we spend our Havenage data. I don't know if there is anything else we can do right now. Actually, we're kind of running out of actions. Can we do anything at Fang? Out of office. We could buy some more ship mine fragments. I don't know if there's any reason to do that, to be honest. We have a ship mine. Is there any reason to have more than one of those? So why don't we just spend our last point here uh, getting some money? And we also improve, uh, progress our yard hand. So we're, we're completing a whole bunch of stuff today. New, wow, Havenage offices. So there's this. Tracking yet again, a slate in the office advertises that Havenage are looking for informants on gang activity in the, in the eye, they'll pay. Fragment supply, sophisticated tech is rare on the eye, so the shipyard yard is happy to pay for ship mine fragments they can dismantle and reuse. So why don't we go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and spend, uh, throw my extra fra um, ship mine on there. Not the one I made, not the ship mine core, just the ship mine fragment for some extra cash. That's a good chunk of money I just got there. And uh, what's this unit assembly? So this is new things. And we actually have a double benefit. We could do either here. So we could actually like probably progress both of these at the same time and make quite a bit of money. Um, so that's, that's a new door opened or window. From the walkway, the side reel horizon looks impossibly vast. A landscape of plating and frames all along her flanks. Torches flicker, drones maneuver, arch lights glint. Arc lights glint. The sense of scale and industry is both stunning and strangely unsettling. We have Lem and Min Mina. She's quite beautiful, I think. You turn to see a figure a little way down the walkway, leaning at the railing. He is thin, ragged, his work gear poorly fitting and loose. The torches of the side reel horizon flicker in his eyes as he turns to you. Lem, he leans back from the rail, revealing a child standing beside him, staring out at the ship. And this is Mina, he adds with a smile. Hi, Mina. <laughs> she stares and tucks herself behind Lem, who dutifully picks her up. She's a little slow to trust, aren't you, Mina? She buries her face in the folds of his overalls. Mina looks out from Lem's chest, a dark brown eye twinkling among the rough material. You working on her then? Lem asks eagerly, gesturing to the vast ship, or just admiring. He shifts Mina's weight to his other arm. Working. Me too, me too. He flashes at a Havenage pass. I knew it just to look at you. I mean, he stumbles a little over his words, not wanting to be misunderstood. I mean, you look like a worker. She's Mina, and my ticket out of this place. Our escape vector, so to speak. Oh, she's Mina's and my ticket out of this place. It really sounded like he was talking about the kid being... <laughs> okay, anyway. The ship? You haven't heard? Anyone who takes a Havenage contract on the side reel horizon will be entered into a draw for the transit su support crew. He smiles. We won't get to sleep the journey through, though. But a couple of decades of service will be nothing for me and Mina if it means landfall in a new world. He winks. Transit support? Uh-huh. Someone needs to stay awake to keep the thing running. He straightens up, stretching his back. That's a colony ship, friend. The Celis Foundation is sending thousands to settle a system well outside the reach of the core worlds. It'll be a totally independent colony. No surrogacy. No corporations. Uh, sounds crazy. Could be. But you see another way out of here? This way we can build a home somewhere with real gravity, real air, rain. He plays with Mina's hair absent-mindedly. Rain, Mina. You'd love that, I think. Mina responds by pushing his hands away. Daddy, she whispers. Food. Pulling an exaggerated, grumpy face. She glances uh, furtively at you as she plays with a set of dog tags that hang from Lem's neck. I'm just chatting a little, Meanie. Uh, give Daddy a sec. He turns back to you and you suddenly notice how tired he looks. I'm not on the Havenage crew yet, but I'll work my way in. You can do it too, friend. We have to stick together. 
He smiles a little shakily, and you wonder how long he's been working to break into the office uh, official shipyard crew. I'm working on it. He looks at the side real horizon as uh, if trying to pull energy from those flickering torches from the vast hull. We've got to hold out, okay? You aren't sure. You aren't quite sure if he is talking about to you. That's how it works. While he stares out, Mina catches your eye curiously. You agree, Mina? She straightens up and meets your eye. Daddy loves me, she says, it's stubbornly, daring you to question her. Lem smiles and lifts Mina. That's it. We hold on. He smiles sheepishly at you. We we're just a couple of softies, isn't that right, Mina? He sets her down, standing by his side, and she clings to his leg. Gotta go feed this one. He pats her back. Maybe see you on a shift, huh? He turns, and they walk down the walkway, away from the shipyard. You see them talking, and then a moment later, Mina turns around and stops. See you, robot! Her shout echoes down the walkway, and she flash flashes you a parting smile before running to catch up with Lem. You watch them a little uh, before you turn back to the impossible scale of the side reel horizon. A ticket out. <clears throat> Not for me, I'm gonna rebuild my ship. Y'all are on your own. You... Uh, never mind. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for this uh, semi-extra-long episode. Uh, I hope you are enjoying this series, and if you are, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. See you next time.